It's the I Can't Mom Today podcast with Heather, the new mom, and Vera, the <clears throat> seasoned mom. I Can't Mom Today. Hey, this is Vera and Heather back again with another episode of I Can't Mom Today podcast. Hi, Vera. Hey, Heather. How's it going? <sighs> you know, I mean, you know, you know, you know. You know. <laughs> I feel like I I'm mean, like, a, know. I'm in a house of cards right now and everything just crumbling. Oh, yeah. Well, the, I don't know if you remember, I posted this on our um, Facebook group. Um, it was like it says something like list of things I'm handling well. And then one. No, it's nothing. blank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nothing <laughs> I'm handling anything well. I know. Yeah, we uh, so I don't have did I tell you about our car getting hit and run. No. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So somebody like stole a car. It was like this big thing. Cops were there, gun, guns drawn. All, I mean, like I was like, I don't even, I can't even envision how this went. So I would love to get the body cam video of, <laughs> of what happened. So wait, so where was your car? In a parking lot. And I was at my meeting and I come out and I'm like, what the, f-? you know, <laughs> like what, like my car is not in the lines anymore. Like there's pieces on the ground. I'm like, what is going oh on? Oh my God. Uh, yeah. So, um, so that's, so we're bringing, I'm bringing that in today to get checked out to make sure it's structurally sound. Um, yeah. then we got back from Oklahoma on Sunday night, like late car wouldn't start battery's dead. And so now that one keeps dying. And so Brad's having to jump it off every time he tries to go. So we're like, I'm just like, what, what, <laughs> um, which isn't a it's super big deal. Cause I don't go to work every day, but it's still the fact that like, what if this car is not working? And then what if that car, like we yeah. have no, it's not like we're like made of money where we're like, I mean, we're still paying off. No. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So I'm just like, Ugh. but it's okay. Yeah. That's it's stressful. Okay. That is. It's very stressful. Like when Luke's AC went out in his car and I went to my car while his car was in the shop and you never know how long that's going to take and ended up taking like over a week. And so oh, meantime, again, you're down a car. And like you said, since I work from home, usually that's not that big of a deal, but it's mm-hmm. still kind of, if something comes up, you're, you're like, ah, I don't have a vehicle. Yeah. So it's stressful. Yeah. So <laughs> anyways, how are you? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you know, the, the usual like teenager stress where I go from one hour, he's doing graded school and then the next hour he hates school and he wants to quit. So you know, oh. aside from that up and down and then, well, he did, you know, he's, he's epileptic as a lot of people may already know. And he had a seizure cause he forgot to take his medicine. So that was stressful, but yeah. you know, again, at least we're lucky. We know that the medicine works. So he just needs to remember to take it. Yeah. So, you know, but again, an 18 year old getting them to remember to do just about anything is like nearly mm-hmm. impossible. So, can, um, can you remind him then though, that he went from going to school all day to just going to school partial days and then I eventually he'll, he'll not have to go to school. <laughs> so like, this well, is just like slowly, give, gradually releasing you off. And, well, and actually to give his dad some credit, his dad helped sign him up, you know, cause it's his first semester at college mm-hmm. and helped sign him up. Literally his schedule is like 11, 20 to three 20 Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And it's yeah. four classes. He's taking Can 12 I credits. I mean, it's awesome. Exactly. I'm like, that's amazing. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's just, well, again, especially after COVID, it's just, everything is just a mess. So, yeah. So there you go. That's my big ball of stress. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. It, it's okay. I mean, it's what it is, right? Like we're going to get through it and next week there'll be something else. Exactly. But we just have to keep in, in mind, like the, the positive things that we're still here. That's right. We're here. We've and I get to talk to you podcast. every week. That's right. And, yes. we, have a, and we have a return uh, well, guest. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, because we yes. still had so much to talk about. <laughs> and she has littles at home. So it's, uh, you know, life of a mom or parents, really any, any, any parent. Yeah. Um, especially right now, we just have kids like they just pop up and you're just like, who did, who is this? Where, yeah. where did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> So we just hi Paige. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching my four-year-old now like build planes out of Legos. <laughs> oh, that just cool. is. <laughs> uh, oh. You know, as you were talking, um, Vera, it reminded me of this app called Most Days. Have you heard of that? No. It's like a habit tracking app that I actually recommend to a lot of my adolescent and young adult clients. I know. <laughs> We're just yeah. going right into it. <laughs> hey, may as well. <laughs> um, but it lets you link up 
and create a daily habit routine of like mental yeah. health stuff. So sometimes exercise, meditation, taking your medication. Um, oh. And then you get to connect with other like therapists and psychologists and mental health professionals that are on the app doing the same things. Um, so oh. you kind of see who your routine matches up with and you get to hold each other accountable and kind of check in. That's great. Um, it's called most days. Most days. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to write that down. Yeah. Most it's days. And you can customize your schedule, like to improve your sleep. Like when are you getting out of bed? Are you getting sun? How often are you getting sun? Like just to create those habits, it's been uh, really useful. Wow. Handy dandy. Thank you. I'm, yeah. I'm, well, for myself and for my son, actually, that sounds like I was like, I can use that. <laughs> yeah. You, you would be, I probably not surprised on how many, even adults forget to take their medication on a regular basis. Like, oh yeah. Well, and that's the, you know, poor guy. He has to take, you know, three horse pills twice a day. And literally if he goes more than maybe like 16 hours without taking it. So he'll have a seizure. I mean, it's just, that's just what happens. So the good part is we know, and that's what the neurologist says, you know, I have patients who would kill to be in your situation because some patients, the medicine doesn't work. So Mm -hmm. you're lucky the medicine works. You just got to remember to take it. But, and I, I try not to get too hard on him because I'm like, you know, adults forget too. So I've forgotten. It's a natural consequence, but it's like a bad, you know, it's a pretty drastic consequence. Um, With us, it's like, oh, well, we don't get our, you know, whatever calcium for that day. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It's not going to like debilitate us or take us down in any way. Right, Um, right. Exactly. So, so we're, you know, so I'm going to definitely tell him about that. And the other thing, the good part is, is that unfortunately, you know, he's, had this for several years so he Mm -hmm. knows what it feels like you know they call it the aura Mm -hmm. so he starts to feel it so luckily you know like if he's driving or in a situation where he's could be in danger if he has a seizure he he can tell so at least he can put himself in it yeah so so that's knock on wood so i told him i was like hey that's something for you to put in your toolbox you know for a, a you know a way to control your situation. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yes. I love it. Set yourself up for success. Like, Hey, I feel like I'm going to put myself somewhere safe. So yeah, yeah, totally. And warn the people around you. It might be coming. That's because that's what he did. You know, he's like, "Uh Oh, you guys. And so unfortunately, or fortunate, maybe, I don't know how every look at it. His friends are kind of like now (laughs) they're, they're used to being around someone who has seizures. And I mean, he's not the only one, unfortunately, or whatever too. So, um, so that's, it's kind of good. You know, he has a little bit of a support system in that respect. So that's kind of good too. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. I'm glad to hear that. So anyway, sorry. Now, now you know, now that we're talking all about me. We wanted to touch on um, one of the things that we didn't get to the last time was like breaking the cycle, you know, how we end up a lot of times parenting the way our parents parented. Mm-hmm. And Mm -hmm. breaking that cycle, you know, maybe there's some positive things that your parents did, but there are some negative, I mean, no parent is perfect. So yeah, yeah. that's not real. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Well, the pendulum is kind of swinging, right? Because it was like, do as I say, like no talking back, like you don't get to think anything. And then the pendulum swung to like, where, you know, free range parenting where it's, you know, you make your own decisions and is that a good decision? And, you know, they'll, you know, if they fall off the monkey bars, then they'll figure it out. You know, it's just like, so it's, um, I feel like kind of our generation, beer and eyes, I don't, I'm not sure how you are page, but, um, (laughs) you'll never know (laughs) we're like kind of in between the, the like super free range. And then the, like, you need to do. So our parenting is a little bit different, even though we're at different spectrums, Mm -hmm. um, in life. So I'm kind of taking pieces from both of them, but I, I know there are things that I do them like that my mom did. I was just like, Oh, I'm like, why am I doing that? I'm so like, stop. Like, why are you being like that? You know? And not, and you know, not to say my mom was a terrible parent. Um, but there are things that I wish she wouldn't have done or Mm -hmm. she would have done differently. And I just want to make sure that I'm doing that the best for Baker and that he is, you know, not going to be traumatized. Cause there are some, I, I'm, I'm sure I've, I, I've traumatized him already. So like this morning he was, <laughs> he's in the phase of like, no, you, you know, you're lying. No, you say this. No, you, I'm like, shut. 
And so like this morning I was like, until you can get your shit together, like, just don't like, you're going to be on your own buddy. And he goes, no, you need to get your shit together. I was like, (laughs) 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 whoops. Well, he actually didn't say it, but he's like, started to say, he's like, I don't, I don't think he's never hurt. He doesn't know that word very often. So, um, yeah. So he's like, you're going to get yourself together. (laughs) (laughs) Like, Not my proudest mom moment. But so like, you know, how, how do we, how do I navigate that where I'm not, you know, setting him up to be a jerk or, (laughs) you know, or parents that way someday, I don't want him to do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Paige is like mute. (laughs) And I think it, I think some of it too, is that like, it's not, that you're parenting. It's really like, it's more me. It's about me than it is about him. Right. And so like how I'm handling things versus how, um, but that's going to impact him. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think more people parent based on their past experiences than realize it. So coming into that kind of awareness that how you were parented and what you did or did not get based on your own perception really plays a lot into what types of things are going to set you off as a parent. Um, And I think a lot of the times I had this graphic on my Instagram that was like, people need to heal before they have kids. And I just like crossed it out. And I was like, what if you need to do? What if you didn't know you needed to heal until you had kids? Because that's when it's like really up and in your face. Yeah. And um, I'm a therapist and I 100% agree or will tell you that I have traumatized my children. I'm sure of it. I am sure that they'll need therapy at some point because mom is a therapist and shoves these skills down their throat or whatever else. So I think the first step of the screaming was about the early morning popcorn. So Uh, (laughs) uh if you're quiet, you'll get popcorn. Exactly. (laughs) I cooked it last night. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. Oh, it's just slightly rubbery. <laughs> uh, but the first step is really coming into the awareness that like this bothers me and why does it bother me? Like, mm. Just being able to acknowledge that what's happening. Thank you. Yep. I'll get Aww. you more water. <laughs> that what's so happening um, bothers you. And you're like, okay, let me figure out why. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's things that I think my sister and I do, I think that we're a little bit softer than my parents were, I think partly because that's what we kind of wished for. Again, I think there are things that my parents did that were right in that respect, you know, like when, but my dad used to say like, put up or shut up. And that used to really piss me off. And I'd be feel like, wait a minute, you're not on my side. And it it kind of made me feel a little bit, not I, I'd, unloved is not exact is a little bit strong of a word, but it just kind of made me feel a little bit like, oh, so I think. And and again, uh, you know, if my sister listens to this, she might be like, I don't know if I agree with that, but I feel like both of us are a little bit um, softer on our kids than mm-hmm. our parents were on us, partly yeah. because of that. And then and then I think, well, maybe I'm a little too soft. Well, I, th- I, I would agree. Like, I, I think my sister and I are very much softer than my mom was on us. Um, but the different, like even in, in just our di- family dynamic, my sister was a more compliant child and just like, okay, you said, no, I can't do that. And I always push limits and that's just my personality, but my mom didn't know how to deal with that. And so, um, so my dad, but my dad would always, he accepted me, right. He was just like, this is Heather. And I mean, he like, I had like two opposite parents, one that like, let me walk all over him, essentially (laughs) one that was like, no, you're not doing it. Yeah. You know, very strict. And so I feel like I pull from both of those with Baker because I know he needs structure. I know that's a good thing, but I also try to allow him to like, you know, if he gets a no out of me, like, uh, you know, I want to go outside, you know, and play and I'll say, no, I, I try to explain it, but, um, and, but sometimes I just say no and he'll, you know, start whining. I'm like, no, 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 we can, you don't get to whine, but you can ask why you can ask those questions. Like, why don't you want me to? And I'm fine with that. But I was like, you don't get to whine. You don't get to, you know, throw a fit. Like that's not okay. But asking questions is okay. And then I tell him to get his shit together. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Whatever. That's how it works. (laughs) Well, yeah. And if you think of it in a more self-compassionate way, all you're doing is gathering information on yourself. 
these interactions that you're having with your kids and how, how you parent based on your past experiences is all information gathering you're using to inform how you parent now. And I would say that every single person that remembers how they were parented, whether they liked or didn't like about it, they're going to swing that direction because it's what you needed. Um, and you're also, <laughs> you're also going to strive to swing the pendulum in the direction of providing what you didn't get, but you felt like you needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. I think that's why I kind of tend to be, you know, if Lucas is having a problem, then I'm saying, oh, well, okay, what's your problem? Sit down and talk to me about it. Let's analyze your feelings and go through this, you know, big. And now, of course, now <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, I've created a monster because now at 18, he's like, mom, but he's got all, and it's so complicated. And again, like, I love him and I love that he can express himself. But yeah, sometimes it's like, oh, dear. <laughs> what did I do? I created a monster. <laughs> I created a monster. <laughs> But uh, but again, Heather and I talk about because Heather uh, babysat for my son when he was really little. Mm -hmm. And um, his the big joke is that he would because I had like five friends named Heather and he called her my Heather. And so he'd say, I don't like my head. Oh, I don't like my head. Oh, I don't want to see my head. Oh. Of course, he loves her now, you know, but she was compared to me. She was very dry and also very much like one story before bed. That's it. You know, yeah. whereas I'd be like, oh, OK, you could have another one. And. She's just was much more disciplined in her babysitting. And, and she's like that, I think, even as a parent, she mm -hmm. hasn't really softened in that respect. <laughs> no, I haven't. But at the same time, like I, I do feel bad about like for the, the kids that I babysat, I was like, damn, I was like, really, I was not the best. Like I wouldn't trust myself <laughs> with my kid. Uh, oh, like yeah. going back, sure, like fine. just looking at the things, I was, I was young. I was, you know, that's all I knew. And so um, as a parent, I, I know differently, you know, I still, I'm still very much like that, but I'm less, uh, less hard about it, you know? Um, so I don't know. Yeah. But well, what that, and that's kind of brings me to something I wanted to ask you, Paige, um, how do we, cause you you, you touched on like awareness. So that's what, like, like Heather's talking about how she re became aware uh, that maybe she was a little harsher than she she would be now. How do you develop that awareness exactly? You become Great a parent. <laughs> <laughs> you will have a parent. Um, well, you really you really got to tune in, right? So this is kind of like the cusp of learning emotional regulation. So when we're working with our own children, we want them to be able to regulate their emotions. We have to regulate ours, and that takes a level of awareness. Like, oh, I'm getting upset right now. So what I recommend is uh, parenting is a skill. I don't, I don't know if anyone's been able to tell anyone that before, but I was like, why, did, why is this a new concept out in the world? Parenting is a skill. No parents are born. Perfect parents don't exist. And it takes time and practice to learn skills. <laughs> and, <She> earplugs. <laughs> and earplugs. Yes, exactly. So I, it takes practice to be able to build the awareness and to move into like gaining self-awareness and then to, to move it further. And so there's something that I call stop. I don't know if you guys have heard it before, no. but it, it is a technique or a skill we use to help us develop self-awareness. And so when you recognize that you're starting to get upset or you're bothered by something, we're, we're gathering information about ourselves. So we are going to stop. We're going to take a breath. We're going to observe what's happening in our body and what's happening around us. And then we're going to use all of that information we've gathered to make a plan and proceed. Hmm. And so as you, and I have <clears throat> some, some clients that I've worked with, like we'll post sticky notes and even parents that I've worked with, they'll put sticky notes, like with stop written really big somewhere where they know they'll see it, where they have an alarm on their phone to just practice and it can happen waiting in line at the grocery store. You can do it when you're driving in traffic. You could do it when you're with your kids and they're starting to argue or scream or, uh -huh. or even sometimes when my instinct is to tell my child, no, I stop. And I'm like, okay, why? Like, let me observe what's happening. Why am I saying no? Am I saying no because that's my value or am I saying no because that's just what I'm used to saying or am I saying no because I don't want to deal with it right now, which is also okay. <laughs> Um, but that's one specific skill 
that I teach and that as you practice it, those neural pathways in your brain are going to strengthen and they're going to continue to kind of carve out this path. So that becomes more habitual and you develop more awareness and you develop it faster. So you're able to stop and really figure out what's happening. I was just about to ask that, like, how, how do you handle it when your, your child is like, you know, I don't know, it could be let's read this book. And it's like, mommy, can I read this book? Mommy, mommy. And you're like trying to stop. And you're like, mommy, mommy can I? And because, you know, they ask like 65 times mm-hmm. until you like acknowledge, <laughs> acknowledge them. Yes. Uh, so like, how do you think through that? And like, how can you acknowledge them and then still think through that, that process so that you're absolutely. Able- so a lot of the times the process begins because we've already like let's say exploded, gone off, whatever, lost our cool. And now we're feeling that guilt or remorse. Mom guilt does you nothing. If I could gift the world anything, it would be to erase mom guilt. Oh, no um, kidding. <laughs> but it, that, that's a trigger right there where a lot of people start like, okay, what happened? Now I'm going to stop. So then the next time you have more information on yourself and you can practice starting a little beforehand, but also another myth about parenting is that we have to give all of ourselves all the time. And when I say it like that, it's like, Oh, common sense. Of course you don't do that, but we do that because we love and care and nurture. And so if you need space, you need a break, you need a minute. It's okay to say that and to set that boundary. You don't need to be run into the ground because you're like, reading 65 stories and getting 10 cups of water and three cups of milk. And then you got to heat up the milk and now they're mad because the milk's too hot. So you have to blow on it. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds very familiar. (laughs) It's okay. I think it's hard for parents as speaking as a mother, I think it's in working with a lot of mothers. I think it's hard for mothers specifically to set that boundary of like, this is taking too much of me right now. And I, I, this is what I can do. I love that you said that. (laughs) Well, and I was just actually just talking to a a friend of mine who's a grandparent. We'll see on our video chat. You can see there's a unicorn now. Look at that. But uh, anyways, um, a friend of mine is a grandparent and she was noticing that her daughter the way her daughter parents her grandchildren, she said it's like they feel like they, you know, she's exhausted all the time. Because what my friend felt was that they feel like they have to constantly like take the kids to the park, play, you know, like play with them all the time and entertain them all the time and take them places and all that kind of stuff. And I think that a lot of parents are are feeling that right now. And I used to say to Luke, you know, when he was little, he'd say, well, what are we going to do today? Um, And I'd say nothing. You're looking at it. Play with your Legos. You know, it's raining outside. I don't want to get out of my pajamas. You know, (laughs) we'll watch a movie later, you know, and I'll make you some popcorn and we'll do something. But for right now, I'm going to watch Judge Joe Brown and you can play with your Legos and and be fine. I'd say every day is not a carnival, you know, Mm -hmm. and of course, he didn't like that very much. But but I, I knew that I was like, I can't I'm sorry, I'm not taking you to the arcade or the bouncy house place or whatever today. We're just going to chill. Sorry. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Absolutely. There's nothing better than for your kids to be bored either. (laughs) So that need for constant um, like entertainment or what are we doing now? What are we doing now? These are all things. If you think about it long-term, so I'm a therapist. Luckily I get to have the foresight, right? So I'm like, okay, what am I setting you up to expect from other people someday? And you know what? Someday, no one's going to be there like enslaved to bring you lukewarm milk. (laughs) You got to get it yourself. (laughs) Um, And I think sometimes that's counterintuitive, again, because our pendulum swings. So when we come from more of the really strict, I'm not going to nurture or care, we want to over nurture almost a little bit. And like, this is how we show we love you. And I'm doing all these things. Um, And so it's really trying to become aware and, and find that balance in there. So that's where that think, acts of service love language comes from, from parents. There you go. <laughs> well, I was thinking too, like maybe, you know, do you think that social media has made that worse? Because, you know, you see all these pictures and videos of people doing all these fantastic things with their kids all the time and their kids look, you know, immaculate and all that. Do you think that maybe that maybe exacerbates that, that kind of syndrome? <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. There's no way it can't. Because whatever you're taking in is what becomes the expectation 
whether you realize it or not, that now becomes your self expectation too. That's why they always talk about how body image and how like that's portrayed, how women are portrayed in the media has caused so much in the upswing. It's the same thing when it comes to parenting and social media tends to show the highlight reels, not as much Mm -hmm. of the real moments and the stuff that really leads to connection. The other thing that I find so disappointing is how hard it is to build a tribe of other Mm -hmm. mothers. If you're able to build that tribe of other mothers who have similar experiences and are willing to be vulnerable, you realize that you're not really alone. We're not meant to be on this island parenting. That's another reason why like mental health. Hi, honey. (laughs) Thank you. She's cleaning my nails. (laughs) (laughs) That's another reason why parental mental health is on the decline. Like we need more support. We need more connection. We need less judgment. Um, we need more understanding. I love that. Everyone's going through it. Everyone's going through it. Well, especially in like with the pandemic and everything and when everybody had to have their kids home all the time and some people still do because they're having troubles finding daycare and, you know, so that certainly didn't help things. Mm -mm. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And when it comes to um, like this level of reparenting, I also encourage people to know that learning how to understand what happened to you and how that information plays into your parenting so you can make informed parenting choices doesn't require forgiveness. Like you don't have to be all about, you know, I didn't get what I needed and it's okay and I forgive you. It's about creating a narrative. And so as a therapist, what that means is creating a beginning, middle and end um, and like reason for your experiences and why they happened. And that starts the healing process. And that provides so much information for you to be able to mindfully apply that to your parenting. I like that you brought that up to the forgiveness because that I could see how that would slow the process down a little because you'd feel like, well, then I I should really forgive my parent for whatever X, Y, Z, but what if I don't feel like forgiving them? So I could put a roadblock up. So that allows you to kind of work, work around that or through it or whatever. (laughs) If you forget, if you don't have to forgive, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And you, when you think of experiences, so I had an experience with my oldest daughter um, where I was letting my husband take over parenting and he was trying to support me. So I was like, I need to get in the shower. And she's six and a half. So she's like, I don't need to shower ever. Um, and like refusing to do it. And so he was like, mom asked you to get in the shower. And I was trying to let him take over and do what he needed to do. And somehow, some way, the whole thing like escalated. I don't know how, but it just did. And she was like in tears in her room, like screaming. And he is like in the living room trying to calm down. And I'm like, let it happen. So I go over and I'm like, Hi, Mama. I'm gonna go. You're done. Oh, thank you. My nails are done. Oh, Yay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to go, you know, repair that relationship? Like being married to a therapist is not <laughs> It's an always his, his favorite thing. And he's like, I already tried. She doesn't want to talk to me. And I was like, okay. So I hear her just sobbing and like talking to her sister out of the bathroom window in the backyard about how mad she is at her dad and how they need to find a new dad. And like all this oh, stuff. they're so like, she's getting, she's getting me off now. She's like, yeah, yeah. join my yeah, anti dad protest. <laughs> um, and so he goes back and tries to repair again and it, like not successful. And so I give it some time and she come down and I go in there and I see her face is like puffy and red and streaked with tears and. I'm instantly triggered. I'm like, because I never want my kid to feel that way. I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, dad, pull my hair. It was like sobbing. And she has a very sensitive head. So even brushing her hair sometimes was like Uh. the world's greatest struggle. And I instantly like felt my whole body light up and I was like hot and red. And I was like, did you tell dad that he pulled your hair? Like trying to keep it under wraps. And she's like, adults aren't supposed to hurt children and like <laughs> went through this whole thing and so I come from a childhood where there was a lot of physical punishment and so that right there was a huge trigger for me and I was like I was totally trying to keep it together and so I help her calm down a little bit I'm still really really triggered 
And this is one of those after the fact I had to like pick it apart mm. and understand what was happening moments. But I take her, I'm like, let's go talk to dad in the living room and you can tell him how you feel. And so I carried her to the living room. She was like, dad, I hurt my feelings. You pulled my hair. And he was like, I didn't pull your hair. And I was like, I'm answer. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mm. And he was like, I'm sorry if you think I pulled your hair, but I didn't. And I was like, don't answer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's and one so of those. I'm sorry you feel that way. Apologies. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, but you didn't pull her hair, right? And he's like, no, I didn't. And you would never hurt her on purpose, right? And he's like, no, I wouldn't. And I'm like, getting more and more annoyed. And I was like, and you love her, right? And he's like, <laughs> why are you asking me these questions? And like, I'm getting death daggers. And I just like walked away and she come down to the shower, did all the things, their best friends. I totally fall apart and I'm like crying. And I was like, you know what? You know why I asked you those questions? Because that is what I needed to hear from the adults in my life when I was little and I was hurt by an adult in my life, whether or not they intentionally hurt me. I mean, there was intentional hurting, but whether or not they intentionally hurt me, I just wish but there would have been, you know, that moment where the person that I yeah. love the most was like, I would never hurt you on purpose because I love you. And I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. was like, wow, what an interesting, like what interesting Mom, information to have about Mom, myself. You're done. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. It, it is like, Oh, so I was trying to get what I always wanted for my daughter, you know, <laughs> it just makes complete sense. Right. Well, and Heather, so just, sorry. What? Oh, I was just I was just I was going to say, Heather, you weren't saying anything, so I wasn't. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just listening, listening. Yeah. <laughs> OK, it's, it's, it's just really interesting. I'm just trying to, like, think about times where. You know, I may have done something that I wouldn't have liked as a child and just, you know, how I could have handled it differently. Sorry. So it was in my own head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Self-analyzation. It's good. That's that self-awareness. See yeah. what's we're going to work on. Yeah, exactly. And also knowing that we all have those moments, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I always say the problem with relationships is they involve another person, you know, it's it's like, true. it doesn't make it. That's what, you know, we've talked about this on, on the podcast is that, you know, it's not one size fits all because your kid's different than my kid and I'm different than you. And so you just do the best you can to, be, be as flexible and self-aware as you can and, and just do your best and cross your fingers <laughs> basically. So, okay. So Paige, I want you to um, tell us again, it's parenting with Paige. Tell us again, how people can find you in case they didn't hear last week's episode. Um, just tell us where you are. Yeah, I am on Instagram at parenting with Paige. Um, I'm on Facebook parenting with Paige and parentingwithpage.com. Um, I take parenting clients and I'm licensed therapist in Idaho and Arizona. So I'm also accepting clients for that, but I really love the work. I'll be hosting another book club to talk more specifically about reparenting based on the book, um, The Power Showing Up by Dr. Dan Siegel, starting in November. <clears throat> and Aww. there's so much to unpack with that, but we will cover... Um, micro and macro self-care as a parent. <laughs> we'll talk about um, the guilt of parenting. We'll talk about how to create a coherent narrative and you'll get. See, this is why we keep the podcasts to a certain length. <laughs> like the kid alarm starts to go off. You've been doing this podcast for too long. (laughs) Pay attention to me. Where's my popcorn? (laughs) Um, But we'll walk through how to create a narrative and how to really ask those questions of like, what happened to you? You think of it as like a person in power. Uh, Okay, thank you. Um, And like, how are, what happened to you by a person in power? And that could be in almost any circumstance, right? Specifically in parenting. And what did you need from them to make that relationship better? And then what is your golden thread? So like out of every experience, there's a golden thread of something we learn or maybe some way we find to empower ourselves or other people. And so what was your golden thread out of that experience and how do you use it now? So that's one of my favorite ways to build a narrative. Um, And you'll announce all the details on your Instagram. Yeah. 
All of that will be awesome. on my Instagram. Awesome. Cool. Yay. Well, and of course, if you want to find us, we have our Facebook group, which is our private group. I can't mom today. And then our page, I can't mom today podcast and same thing on Instagram and Twitter and um, all that fun stuff. Oh, I can't mom today. Po- I can't mom today podcast at gmail.com as well. If you want to email us. Yeah. And don't anything. forget to rate the podcast. Just go down below on your podcast player and hit those five Click stars. Five stars. <laughs> five stars. And, um, <laughs> I am always open to any questions or any, any other information or any questions anyone has about anything I'd share and feel free to reach out to me. Amazing. Oh, awesome. And if you're in the November one, I'll probably be in that one. In that study. Yeah. And that book club uh, <laughs> yeah. in November. Yeah. That sounds really fascinating. I'm kind of like, I think I could still use some of that help, even though mine's 18. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's <Always>. never too <laughs> late. <laughs> <Never>. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, Paige. It was awesome. Oh, and again, you know, fun. we we might very well be be calling you back if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> any subject. <laughs> but I, I demand the unicorn come back. Yes. <laughs> of course. Unicorn at every appearance. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks Until again, next Paige. Time. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.